follow-up boss office hours. Today, we're going to be talking about phone stuff, texting, calling, you know, all these things that uh, everybody should be doing all the time. Uh, my name is Lee Adkins. I'm here with Lyndon Bystrom. How are you, Lyndon? Hey, I'm good, Lee. How are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Always great to do these with you. Uh, yeah, you've definitely. been on the team for a long time, and we've gotten to, gotten to do a good chunk of these. I have. We've done a good amount. I think I've been over over four years now on the, on the team. We've That's seen awesome. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you tell people just a little bit your role at Follow Up Boss? I think most people know what their success manager is and does, but you know, just so people can understand your your specific role and the success manager team. Yeah. So I'm a I'm a manager of our customer success team. Um, the role of the customer success team here is to really we we start with onboarding brand new teams. N new team comes to Follow Up Boss. Um, and we help give direction. We really want to understand what's important to you. Um, what are your goals? Why are you here at Follow Boss? Why, more importantly, what's important to you when it comes to a CRM? I think the more that we gather that information from a client, or really in the beginning, the more the more direction, the more value we're able to provide moving forward. Um, we're able to provide a plan, right? Put a plan together. It's not an easy task of just saying we turn it on for a client, right. um, because in reality is follow-up boss is on when you start, right? It's it's ready to go. You can start working a lead today. You can sell a home through follow-up boss to, to one of your clients right now, but we want to really make sure that we give you direction so you're reaching your goals. What's important to you, right? Is it is it assuring that leads never slip through the cracks, right? You always know exactly who to call today. Well, great. We're really going to make sure that you have a strong grasp on smart lists, right? Is automations to run action plans or an action plan as soon as you receive a new lead very important? Well, if you're generating a lot of online leads, we're going to make sure we work closely with you to get all your online lead sources connected. So then we can have an action plan sitting there ready to trigger instantly. So that's what we're really doing on the success team. We want to strategize with you. We want to really kind of work with you and what's important and, and make sure that you have something moving forward always. Awesome. And we'll demonstrate it when we get into sh sharing screens, but it's really <laughs> easy in Follow Boss to click to connect with the success manager. You may have a dedicated one or you may have just a, hey, first available. Um, but we'll show you exactly how to do that as yeah. we get digging in. But yeah, such a great resource, Definitely. no additional cost, somebody to help you kind of strategize your follow-up boss. And to your point, Lyndon, it's great right out of the box, but part of the magic of follow-up boss is that you can tell it to do a lot of amazing things, but exactly. sometimes you have to tell it to do those things to how you run your business. I think there's always the challenge in the beginning of I've got to, right. And this is just speaking for what I see very frequently from, from new teams. It's Okay. I'm so excited. I know the value of follow-up boss, right? This is going to be a huge tool for my business 100%. And it's, all right, I got to learn everything. I got to watch a bunch of webinars. I got to get this set up. I got to make it work just for me. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to start using it. Well, guess what? We're busy. That takes time. That's a lot of work, right? That, it's not that easy. The way that I really see success is once we start, start working leads, whether that's one lead today, right? Someone that you're already familiar with, work that person. I promise you, once you start changing the stage of that lead, you start updating notes, you start calling through follow-up boss. Maybe you decide of an action plan that you want to add to this lead. You do that. Next thing you know, you're doing that to five leads, 10 leads, 20 leads. And then you're constantly leveling up the more and more comfortable you get with it. That's how you're going to learn it. And you're going to learn it today. And you're going to learn it very quickly. And you're going to set it up the way that you need it to run for you. But again, if we take that, okay, let's get it all set up. Let's get everything perfect. That takes time. That's hard to do. And, and I think that could be a roadblock sometimes. I could be wrong. You know, that's not always the case. But if we're really thinking like, what do I need to do today? Start working your leads. Right. Exactly. Exactly. No, I, I love that. I think that was very, very, very well said. So Thank you. saying all of that, uh, getting like we see this constantly. I just I just answered this question in the in the follow up on success community, which I'll also drop a link to. If you're not in that, you should be. Um, about adoption of these, you know, why do I need to have a different phone number? Why should I do this? People are going to be confused. They're not going to like people just call my cell phone and I get business. Like at a high level, Lyndon, why why do we want to call or text through follow up boss? Because in theory, it sounds like a whole other thing, right? Yes. Yeah. At a high level, because you want all of your communication in one spot, right? That's it. You want all your calls, all your texts, all your emails, all your notes to type a client in one central location, right? You can't do that from your own mobile phone number, your normal, your, you know, your personal phone number. Text messages are here, unknown contacts, calls are over here. You can't, you can't nurture your database through your own no mobile phone number. That's right. that's what we're doing here. We're nurturing our database, and you, you that's why it's so valuable. That triggered me to think of something else too, because 
you know, I really encourage this with people um, in, a, in a listing presentation. Imagine how powerful it is to say like, hey, we're going to put a sign in your front yard. And mm -hmm. anybody that calls that number, we're going to know. It's not going to ring some dude's cell phone number. If I'm on an airplane, like we're not going to miss a call. And I mean, we, you may not answer it, but you're going to yeah. have a log of that call. And you're going to literally will never miss a lead on a sign never. call again if you use it that way. 100%. And that's that's the value of a team inbox. Um, that's exactly right. You're not going to miss anything. And selling think, it to agents in the sense that if all the communications in there and you're on vacation, like we can just pick it up because we can just mm -hmm. look at look at the account and go, oh, they're under contract. The you know inspections already happened. Just things yeah. like that. Um, and frankly, the other... It's not a sales pitch, but the other selling point for agents to adopt it is just the idea that like you have that separation of work and life. Like you can use your cell phone again for just your friends and use your follow boss number for actual leads and contacts and clients. How gold is that? Right. I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's gold. It's priceless. It. I always think when someone, you know, there's always that, obviously that initial hesitation of, whoa, wait a minute, you've got to be kidding me. What do you mean a new phone number? Right. The world knows we buy my phone number, but I think. When we think of that, our mind goes straight to that person you spoke to two seconds ago, that person you're working with, right? That you're, you know, you're, you're pending right now and, and, and they have your phone. I get that. I completely understand kind of that thought. Yeah. But what we don't think about is all of those, all that online lead generation where people are asking for us to call all that lead, all those leads that we have generated um, over who knows how long ago or your website generated leads. We're not thinking about those leads and nurturing those leads and creating communication and creating conversations and getting them to communicate with us. Those people that are six, 12, 24 months down the road that we met at a happy hour, right? right. That's what we're not thinking about. And that's where the value of the follow up boss phone number comes in instantaneously, right? There's a lot of tricks and secrets to migrating that person that you're working with today over to your new, creating a text template and sending it out to your past clients. And that's very, and that works. That's great. But again, I want people to kind of think about long-term nurturing database and not necessarily that person that you spoke to two seconds ago, because yeah, I can see that hesitation. But as soon as we think about it that way, it's like, okay, gosh, this is, this is so valuable for me. Right. Absolutely. And so we're going to cover today calling first then texting. We're going to do our best to give you a high-level overview, um, some use cases. Uh, we've got a couple of help desk articles we're going to drop that have some deeper yeah. compliance. We'll talk a little bit about compliance because it's very important. Obviously, you don't want to be spamming people, both in quantity and uh, quality. Yeah. But uh, we're going to show you a few ways to do that, but we're also going to share out a couple of articles that show you more deeply how to make sure you're registered with carriers, you know, you're even more likely to get your number to go through. But we're also going to focus a lot today on features. So, Lyndon, if you want to share your screen, yep. um, and we do have to be in blur mode, unfortunately, so you guys won't be able to see some of the things, but we'll make sure you get get the gist here. So I get I could kind of add to what you said. You said, let's talk about calling first, like how to call. A um, couple ways. Obviously, we can log a call, right? You can just manually log a call. That's That's a lot of work. Or you can simply just call straight from the computer here. Right, we call straight from the computer. It dials out. It's calling from your follow-up boss phone number. We do this from the app as well. We can pull up test lead while you're in the grocery store. Hit the call button. It's calling directly from the follow-up boss app. I'm going to go to top right corner. I'm going to go to my settings. This is where you put. You want to make sure that your personal or your cell phone number is in this location right here. Okay, this number will never be seen by a consumer, by a client, by a contact. The value, the reason for putting your number here is I will scroll down. This is Lee's follow-up boss phone number, okay? That means when he makes a call through follow-up boss, it's coming from this number. You can select change number to assure that you have a local area code. It's gonna pull from your area code. So it's probably gonna be local, but if you wanna change the area code, kind of that one-time change, so, they all, so you'll always be calling from your local area code, you can do that by just selecting change number. Okay, this is Lee's follow-up boss phone number. This number is built to ring directly to this phone right here. Okay, so when someone calls his follow-up boss number, it's going to ring his cell phone. Remember, this is the number that we put in his settings here. That's it. It's that simple. So when someone calls that lead, and I can go back to test lead, it is going to appear right here within the timeline, right? So when Lee makes an outbound call, 
to his his contacts. It's right within the timeline. There's a record. If you choose to turn recording on um, for your calls, they will all be recorded and you'll be able to play it um, to and from. So basically you make a lot of outbound calls in the morning, maybe power hour, you know, your 30, 45 minutes, make outbound calls through follow up boss. You can create a calling list, which is very simple. What happens when you make those outbound calls? You probably leave a bunch of voicemails, right? And now later in the day, you're in the field, you're at the grocery store. Someone calls your follow-up boss number back. Guess what? Your cell phone's ringing and it's all tracking straight to the contact here. Right. And their name will be on it. If they're in follow-up boss, it's going to come up with their name. So you don't have to be like, hey, who is this? It's like, exactly. Oh, this is that guy. And if you're really fancy, especially on desktop, loosely speaking, it's going to jump you to the contact record depending on how it happens but yeah. super easy to be in this contact record while you're on the phone with somebody you can make notes something i recommend to people if it's not distracting you can start composing a text or an email while you're on with them to send as a follow-up so if you're on the phone with them and you say hey i'll send you that 10 ways to have a clean inspection or whatever with some article or something you've got to share you can literally be writing that email or text message as you're talking to them hang up, press send, you've done your follow-up, call the next yeah. person, call the next person. Um, I'll kind of demonstrate how to text here. Obviously it can be awesome. done from the app, uh, simply just sending a text, right? Um, I think this, I think I have your phone number on this one, Lee. So I'm gonna say, hello, how are you? Right, as we go ahead and text this lead, as I send this text, it's going to this contact, right? This is going to this phone number that we blurred out here, but it is going to this phone number, right? That lead is seeing your follow-up boss phone number. When they text it back, it's gonna come straight to this timeline here. So now all your text messages, all your phone calls, all your notes, everything is in this one location. It's also coming back to your phone. It's coming back to your phone via the app. So it's really important to obviously have the app on your phone, enable push notifications. You'll get a push notification and it will take you straight to the conversation. Right. Perfect. Yeah, it's so good to have all this in line here. Just again, if we're nurturing these online leads, they may call you back three months later, three years later, and then you've at least got this context in here of like, oh yeah, we texted two years ago that they wanted to maybe move to Florida or whatever that is. Yeah. But again, the value in that, I, I know I've said this before and I've said this with you specifically, Linda, when we've been on, mm -hmm. um, uh, it people don't generally get and love this until they start doing it and then they're almost always like oh my goodness how did I ever do this before the way I used to do it <laughs> exactly. like it is a one-stop shop for all of your communication it's really that simple it really think is. about think about the ability of adding a relationship here and being able to text both of them at the same time and that communication is right here if you decide to just choose you know text one of them, well, guess what? Yep. That one text chain is right here, right? Mixed yep. in with the relationship text messaging. You, you can't miss communication. You can't when you're right. doing this. Right, and we have a great, um, I didn't even have inbox on our agenda. We may talk about that briefly. Sarah has a great question I wanna go ahead and tackle. She said, yeah. you know, having an offshore ISA who will only be calling desktop, um, it is possible for most general people, I would not recommend not putting a number in my settings, mm -hmm. but it is possible to not do that. The thing that you'll want to do is just make sure they're on top of their inbox and or their notification settings so they don't miss anything. That's a great point. It's not required to have the number in there. However, if you're an agent and you're calling and you're sending and receiving a bunch of calls, you want to make sure your cell phone and your app are all working in synchronicity is maybe not the right word, but all working it together, put your cell phone number under those my settings because yeah. it's simply going to notify your cell phone and be able to ring to it. Um, but again, no one's going to see that your per that personal cell phone number. Yep. So we'll go back to my settings where this was. Lee's talking about right here, putting your cell phone in here. Um, and then there's settings that you can change, right? Where you can have it ring straight to your cell phone, or you can choose to ring desktop and go to your follow-up boss voicemail. So um, ISA's office job, right? Well, that's the this is what we want here. If we're an office like me, I have a follow-up boss phone number, obviously, right? I have an office job. I don't say this too loud, but I probably don't want clients calling my cell phone. That's the value of, of, of my job. Um, but I have this selected here. So it's only ringing my desktop. So right. when it's time to work and my computer is on, well, great, my computer is ringing. Um, right. When I close the computer, I'm not being 
called on my personal cell phone unless I want to, then I would just switch it. Yeah. And that's the perfect situation. Uh, thank you for that clarity, Sarah. That's the perfect situation for Sarah to have the ring desktop only. There's no yes. need to ring a cell. If they leave a voicemail, again, it's going to be in, in that inbox, whether it's the team inbox or the ISAs or OSAs inbox. And you're ready to rock. Once again, like the listing presentation thing, we never miss a call or we never, you know, you may not be able to answer it, but I say you never miss a call, meaning like it happens and you don't realize it happened. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. So one quick thing, and I'm going to drop these articles in. Um, also another feature called, actually, can you demonstrate calling list real quick? Cause I have a video yeah. I'm going to drop to that. If you have the follow-up boss dialer or a pro or platform account, you're going to have what's called call list. And that just means you can select multiple people and then hit that little phone and it's, it's going to call them one after the other. Now it's a single line dialer. So don't be scared. It's not going to ring a bunch of people and whoever answers answers. It rings them one at a time. I'm dropping a YouTube video that details exactly how to use it and how it works right now. Um, but a really such a great way if you're using the smart list zero setup where it has last communication, this is such a powerful way to just knock out your smart list in a few minutes every day. Very quickly. Yes. Hit go. It's quick. You, you, it'll start calling that first one. I'm afraid to hit those, this right here because I might start I calling the first one. So you call the first call one. Dan. You'll we'll leave a voicemail. Um, you'd speak to them and then you're able to, and then it just goes to the next one. You call, you hang up, it goes to the next one, it goes to the next one. But yeah. It's, it's super easy. And the reason I made that video that I just dropped is that it actually does show like calling, going to the next one. It's hard to do that in a demo. Yeah. Um, we'll get somebody to answer and yell at us. But, um, <laughs> but something I want to mention very clearly is... There are a few settings inside Follow Boss to help your deliverability of calls as they and text as they crack down on spam. Um, we all get those, you know, we help members of NAR get health insurance. Like we know everybody's spamming. But for one, you want to do your business registration in Follow Boss if you have not. Um, it's pretty simple. You put in your real company name, your EIN, um, some basic things to say, hey, we're we're a real company. <laughs> And this will help verify, again, that you're a real company and not a spammer. So yeah, you can go to admin phone numbers. This would need to be ideally done in the owner account. Yep. Uh, you can go and hit it. I don't know if I have real info in there, but uh, oh, the follow boss info in there. So, mm -hmm. but having that info in there just to help um, verify with the carriers that you're real is very important. And I'm gonna drop actually two help desk articles right now that cover compliance. We're not going to be able to go into it in great detail here, but please be sure you check these two articles and just that your compliance um, is set and, up. And I, and I can give the quick kind of run, run through of this without getting too deep into it is, you know, a lot of times we get, hey, my, you know, calls are showing up as spam, right? Why, why are my calls showing up as spam? Um, we, we're doing everything and we need you all, you as your, your phone number, your, to assure that your number doesn't get detected as spam, to assure that your number doesn't get blocked from delivering text messages. This was, this is a, this is a conversation that we're having a lot right now, because this is coming from call carriers. It's not coming from follow-up boss, right? It's coming from your AT&T, your T-Mobile, your Verizons. They are really, really, really cracking down on drip texting, mass texting, spam texting, right? Robo text, whatever. They're really cracking down on that, which is even makes follow boss texting more valuable because the design of follow boss texting is that one-to-one -one communication with clients that are expecting to hear from you, right? So we're not texting those, you know, just having a huge list of people. We have no idea who they are and we're just texting and probably a lot are going to invalid numbers, landlines. Those are flags. That's what T-Mobile sees. That's what Verizon sees and says, hey, this does, you know, this this does this might not be an actual business, or why are these not getting delivered? There's a lot of opt-outs. That's gonna, they're gonna stop you. And follow boss isn't gonna stop you from texting. ATT, T Mobile Verizon, they're gonna block your texting, or they're gonna be sending them and it's gonna be shown as spam. So we've all got to do our part to make sure that the people that we are texting are people that are have opted in, right? They've gone to your website and said, yes, contact me, right? If because you, you have that opt-in form. That's that's what's gonna assure your text messaging gets gets delivered. Again, this wasn't a conversation probably 12 months ago, but this is right. something that's very important for the carriers. Um, so important for us to all kind of just, just know about, right? Yeah. And if you have the registration set up also, and you text somebody, hey, this is Bob, and then you include a little bit of a text, and then you call them later, not a guarantee, but nine times out of 10, especially on an iPhone, it 
pulls from that text. And when you call, it'll say maybe Bob with ABC yeah. Realty or whatever. So it won't yeah. just say unknown, at least. It, it's not going to have your full details. Um, but if you text first and include your name in the text, it's possible that when you call them, it might say maybe Bob. And so that way, at least they're a little more likely to answer than just some unknown number. And this all goes back to why Lee brought up the business registration, right? Because that's that's us doing what, you know, going to our, our carriers and saying, hey, that you filled out your business registration. We're going to take that information and, send, and, and say this is an actual business, right? So it's going to help eliminate. It's a big, big step to making sure that your calls aren't delivered as spam and your calls are delivered. So that's why the business registration is so important for everybody to fill out if you haven't already. Absolutely. And two more quick things on calling. Um, and there's a great question on texting. I definitely will tackle um, Kayla or Kala. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but um, we'll definitely, definitely, definitely tackle your question in a second when we get to texting. Um, I just want to remind people that more and more online leads are not even sometimes the number of calls that you make is just incredibly important. People are probably not going to answer on the first call. Maybe if they just register on your site and you call them straight away and they're ready to talk, great. But I just want to remind people, you know, there's a bunch of data around there that, you know, something to the effect of between eight and 14 calls are what it can take to connect with an internet lead. So I just want to like reiterate, since we're talking about calling, that calling somebody once ain't going to do it. But like, no. it's just, that's just, <laughs> that's not a thing. We, I, it's better than zero, but Bear in mind, truly, there's deep data around somewhere between eight, taking eight to 14 calls to connect with somebody. And that's even if they're interested in talking. So I, I heard a good story today earlier um, where think about going into, you know, shopping, going into a store, looking for clothes, right? And as soon as you go in there, sales agent comes up to you and says, can I help you with anything? And what's your answer every single time? No, right? no, I'm good. no you're there to buy. You're going to buy something in there, but your answer is no, right? But then there's that one moment of the truth where you're like, okay, now I need somebody and you're, need scrolling and you're going through the store looking for that person, right? right? So think about that as you make your nurturing calls. You might call them and they're going to say no, but they went to some website and, and submitted their information and they're asking you to call. And when you do call them, it just might not be that time, right? So let's do So that's why we continue to call. I thought that was a really good example. Yeah, uh, I love that because we know, all can relate to that. Right. We all do that. We're all like, no, no, no. Don't follow me around the store and start to sell me stuff. Yep. But when you want help or have a question or do you have this in a medium or whatever, like then you need a person. And who's yeah. who are you going to find first? Right. <laughs> Whoever They're you find on first demand. is exactly <laughs> on demand. I need help now. Yep. And then one more just quick thing, which we're not going to dive too deep into. I'll find a YouTube video and drop it. Um, team inboxes are another really powerful way to have shared inboxes, meaning it can ring multiple people. Um, you can generate as many as you like, don't get crazy, but you know, different, differentiate your sign calls. Google LSA is another great one to track. Are you answering it? Um, so you can set these up. They all have unique phone numbers and they ring out to whoever you designate in the settings. Yep. I've even worked with people that have put, had created these and put them on do not disturb for things like other agents calling them, like putting in the MLS. Yeah. Um, so you don't get 10,000 calls on your new rental listing. Um, uh, uh you know, I like to explain, I think explaining an inbox here can be shown, can be demonstrated really well yep. when I show. So I, I'm in inbox here. I'm going to go to the bottom left corner, left corner here. I'm going to go to manage. Um, and then from here, let's just go create one. So I think that can really kind of explain how they work. So if I go to yep. a new team inbox, you see this number was generated, right? And we can, I don't want to get into porting in phone numbers. There's, it's, I, I it's porting in is a whole different, sub, maybe if there's that number out there, like 1-800 call, call Jerry, right? That's maybe a good example of something to port in because it's everywhere. It's been on your marketing for 20, 30 years. Right. That's a good example. Yes, we can get that number in the follow-up boss. Um, but with that said, I generated a phone number here. So this number right now, if I save this inbox, we can put it anywhere. We can put it on our signs. We can put it on our marketing um, and then the way it's set is exactly what Lee says is you can send it to every, like we can blast this, right? The design of the inbox is to make sure that no inbound sales calls really get missed. So what does that mean? When someone calls this number, we can add team members. So we can add AM test. We can add Larry, the agent, right? Now this is being built to where anyone, excuse me, when this number is called, these people are going to be their phone's going to ring. First person to answer, it's going to get that call. So that's the ability to blast it to everybody. Um, and you can decide who you want it to. So it's just a matter of, again, I'll go to inbox. I'll go to manage in the bottom left corner. I'll go to new team inbox. 
that generates the phone number and then I can start building my routing there. Yeah, and I'll again, I'll drop a video to this that has a lot more detail. Another great use of this, and this video I believe includes it, um, if somebody leaves your team and they've had a follow-up loss number forever that people might actually call back, old leads could call it, um, you can move that to a team inbox. One of the recommendation I make is making an old agent number team inbox. You, you can put multiple numbers in that inbox and then you won't miss a call back if somebody does, I may even have one in this account. In fact, I probably yeah, made the phone numbers here is where I you, can made the video all of this. you can manage, move, yeah. put them elsewhere. So if, yep. if, if Lee, you know, we get rid of Lee here, we're tired of him, we yeah. get, get him off our team. We can go to actions and then change and swap that number and put it elsewhere. So that number he's been using is those calls will still come back to us. Exactly. That's right? a really key you know, thing. We, I want to make sure people realize that because, you know, it's hard enough to get the adoption. We finally get the adoption. Somebody leaves and we're like, that number cannot ring into space. Like we, yeah. we, we need it. Yeah. So cool. I'll find that team inbox video real quick right now. But I think, I think, yeah, that covers all the calling stuff. So texting, we covered a lot of the stuff in texting in particular. I mean, a lot of the calling and texting stuff with compliance and all that similar and how to do it. Um, but let, let's show specifically, Lyndon, you know, again, like where to do that. And then let's talk about text templates. And then want to answer this great question about text templates. So we'll share again here. Um, just reporting. We can go to reporting and text here. It shows us um, our reporting numbers, right? And, you know, hovering over this is pretty self-explanatory. Text sent, text received. Delivery rate. Remember, we talk about compliance, right? If you're sending a, a text template that continues to not get or that reply rate's very low. People yeah. aren't responding to it. That's a flag, right? You can't send a thousand text templates and nobody responds. That's going to be a flag to the carriers, right? The carriers want to see a high response rate. Um, so anyway, these numbers really kind of keep an eye out of, okay, opt-outs, carrier filtered, meaning these messages were treated by spam as blocked by carriers, other errors go into invalid phone numbers, right? Maybe you have a list here and next thing, in, you know, I've seen it very frequently, a big flag is we're texting and they're probably going to invalid numbers or landlines because that means we don't know who in the world we're texting, right? These number, these reporting numbers are really going to kind of show you, okay, I might not be in compliance, right? And, and delivery, right? Good. So this is a good way to kind of keep track of where, how you're texting, making sure that your texting is valuable, making sure you're playing by rules, if by the correct rules, if you if you will. I promise you, if you're texting people that you know and they're responding to your text messages, you are good to go. That's it. And remember, that's the design of follow-up boss texting. So And start with that because that'll get you yep. off the right foot. It's just like email. If you send an email to 40,000 people you've never emailed, you're probably going to get blacklisted by MailChimp. If you send a note to all your past clients, inviting them to an event or just checking in or whatever, and you got a 60% open rate, you're moving in the right direction. So it's the exact same thing with text. One other quick mention, um, if you have text templates you're using consistently or using in your automated action plan, when people first come in, you can, you can um, pop the text. In fact, you should pop the text of that text into your business registration, ask for a few sample texts that you're going to send. And that additionally helps. Like we're going to send this new text to every lead we ever get. If you include that in your business registration, there's a blatant spot for like send a sample, put in a sample text here. That'll help. Another pro tip is if you make that a template, um, you're going to get these compliance stats on it. If you just type it into the action plan, it doesn't quite work the same way. Mm -hmm. And so using a template as your initial text um, also helps with that, that same compliance, a consistent message. You don't have to rely on agents to do it automatically, not to say they shouldn't follow up, but uh, yeah. you know, just, again, I know this, some, some of this is kind of like in theory, boring stuff, but the reality of it is, is you probably want your texts and phone calls to at least, at least get to the person without a big yeah, spam. Exactly. So big it's word it spam. boring, but it's pretty, pretty important, right? Right. Um, to admin text templates here is really, you know, what, well, let's, is there a text template that's not working? Is no one responding to it? Right. Well, here's, you can really check out your, your reply rate. Um, right. Maybe we need to switch this one wording up. No one is answering yep. this one or, or whatever it might be, but admin yep. text templates. So two locations reporting, um, you'll get some good numbers under reporting text and then admin text templates are where you can really get some good reporting on your, on your texting. Yep. And then of course, reporting agent activity to see individual, you know, oh, this yep. guy's texting, this guy's not, you know, yep. this guy made 50 calls last week, somebody else made zero. Um, so that's a good spot. 
two good questions we'll tackle right now. Um, Julia just asked, can you see if the customer read the text message? Unfortunately, that's not possible. Um, it's just straight like architecture or carrier. It, it just, it doesn't happen that way. Lyndon, I don't want to put you on the spot and I don't know the answer to this before I try to stump you with it. I'm curious if you text a link, I don't think this would work, but if you text them a link, if you've emailed them in the past and they're cookied with pixel, this probably would work. But if you text them a link to a site with Pixel on it, I don't think the phone number would would tie into Pixel, but they would potentially already be cookied and you yeah, might get activity. It, the phone number does not tie in. Okay. It doesn't, no. So if you, they're already cookied by email and somehow that might may work, but uh, yeah, unfortunately that's, it's not even a follow boss limitation. It, it's, it's not possible. I mean, obviously on an iPhone, it's possible with an iMessage, but even with SMS, it's not possible to show a, deliverability uh, or not deliverability, but you know, clicks and opens, but great question. And then now I want to tackle um, Kala. I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, question, great, great question about using like a signature in a text message. There's no way to affix that automatically to everybody all the time, but using great text templates is a fantastic way to do that. And in fact, you can use merge codes in your templates so you can have one template that every agent can send out individually and it'll affix their signature for lack of a better term, their name, you know, whatever you want to include in that. So I would highly recommend using text templates mm -hmm. for that. The only thing I would say about that, be mindful exactly of what you're saying, because sometimes if you just say, and I don't want to sound underhanded in this, but if you just say, hey, this is a real estate agent, your text back may not be as uh, you may not get a text back versus opening with, Hey, I just got your info. Do you have time for a quick call instead of yes. like, think, this is the fifth real estate agent calling you in the last minute. I, I like to think texting less is more. What do we want to have? Right. I it's, if I see a, you know, kind of a, a text with a signature, uh, you know, that's just not what we, I, I, I text my, my wife, I text my mom, right. That's, that's who we text. That's that really that, comfortable communication. I don't know if that's a good way to put it, but really we text people that were just less is more, right? Less is more in a text message to me. Uh, that's going to help me get a response. Does a consumer want a signature? Uh, you know, maybe, 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 maybe not. But again, I, I like to always think less is more when we text because that's the world we live in right now. Yeah, I definitely agree. Although I would say if, if you want to do it, uh, using a template right. would be the way to do it. I just yeah. may not include an initial text. And um, I'm going to drop a video for all of you guys. I'm still finding the team inbox one, but I'm going to drop a video for you on MailChimp uh, because as long as you have the MailChimp integration connected, uh, part of this, this question says that you, you guys are not seeing the batch opens from MailChimp in Fault Boss. And if you have the true integration, you actually will. You can even build a smart list based on last marketing email activity. Um, so I'm going to drop that video in the chat as well because uh, you may want to relook at some of your MailChimp settings. Uh, and or just make sure you have the true integration set up. Uh, I'll drop that video now. MailChimp video. All right, perfect. So now, and now I'm off our agenda, Lyndon, so let me hop back. Um, yeah, we talked about templates. You already covered the scoring. The compliance was, was tied to that. Um, yeah, anything else you can think of, Lyndon, in particular? Or if you guys have questions, drop them in the Q&A um, or the chat, and we'll definitely tackle them. Yeah, no, I can't. I don't know if I can think of much more. I think we've covered covered everything. I just, I'm just always going to go back to just, just do it. It's so, it's so valuable, and um, you know, get past that initial hesitation of a different phone number, but embrace it more. Right, and I don't know why I can't search my own YouTube channel for. Uh, there we go. All right, now we're good. But yeah, and again, I just want to re, re, reiterate, like. I know it seems like a different thing. I know it's like, oh, why do I use a different number? For one, I mean, I would recommend going all in with it, but like, you don't have to go all in with it tomorrow. Like, try it, do it a little bit, you know, use it with maybe a current client or use it on new leads. Um, but, you know, I, very quickly as you use it, I mean, I've seen this 10,000 times, like people like, why, why, why? They use it and they're just literally, they're all, just like, oh my goodness, you know, how did, how did I live before this? So <laughs> I promise if you try to adopt it, you'll probably, uh, hundred percent. 
Couldn't right. agree more. I can't find my own video on this, but I'm going to drop the follow-up boss team inbox overview video. Um, and if I can find my own video, I'll send it out with the recording um, of this webinar. But I just dropped the official follow-up boss team inbox um, video in the chat. So cool. Appreciate you guys. Linda, you want to take us out with any uh, any parting words on uh, calling and texting? Um, parting words. I guess I, you know, I, no, I don't. I guess I don't have any parting words. Uh, like we just keep saying, though, the the values there, right? And it's a, it's always a light bulb moment to get started. Um, in, embrace it. It's not your phone number. Understand, you know, that's that's a huge win. Um, just do it. Just yeah. do it. You won't ever regret it. That's great. Something I forgot to mention, but I dropped in the chat too. Uh, if you're wondering about what to say in some of these texts or phone calls. Um, Dale Archdeacon has a fantastic course called Conversion You in Follow-Up Boss Academy. Um, if you're not familiar with Follow-Up Boss Academy, you should be. Click on the question mark while you're logged in, Follow-Up Boss Academy. But Dale's Conversion You course has an unbelievable amount of like literally exactly what to say, things to text people, something cool. I'll, I'll, throw, I'll leave this as a, a parting, uh, I don't know if I call it a gift. That's maybe a little strong. <laughs> um, but I was recently at some of the Wailopo summits with Dale speaking, and he has this really interesting thing now he's sharing, and I'm sure there's a video on it, um, about what tense you're using when you're reaching out. And the idea is that sometimes using future tense gives people anxiety. You know, they're like, I don't know. I don't know what kind of house I'm looking for. I don't know. So speaking more in the present is a really smarter way to get people to engage with you than like some future thing they're maybe not aware of or not comfortable with yet. Um, if you're a Wailopa person, if you can get your hands on the recordings, that's great. But um, think about, you know, just things as simple as that. What what tense are we using? Are we addressing people by name? Um, you know, things like that. So a couple of last quick questions. You want to add to that, Linda? And then a couple well, of yeah, I'll, I'll go not to get too off subject, but I, I couldn't agree more with that. And I've, you know, I think when we're texting someone, we're, we're not asking how they're doing, you know, what, if they have any questions, we're giving that, we got to give them something. We got to give them something that they don't have, right? And, and what is that? It's usually, you know, if it's a buyer lead and they've been online and they've been looking, you know, it's just a matter of, have you seen a property? Would you like to go see it? That's it. That's not you running out the door, showing a bunch of properties all afternoon and tying up your afternoon. That's just kind of opening up for That's you giving them something. Hey, I have the ability to show you anything. When do you want to go see it, right? And that's going to open up the conversation. And you can open up a conversation, gives you the ability to really start to guide them. So completely off subject, but kind of in line with what you're saying. Yeah, but no, give totally. Give but I, think, I think a them. lot of us, we don't think, of, I didn't think about it. When I first heard Dale say it, I was like, oh, that makes all the sense in the world. Like yeah. you're talking future tense and they don't know. They don't want to talk to you because they don't they don't know what they no, no. when they're going to buy or what they're going to do or how to get a mortgage. So speaking in present tense is much more much more comforting. Do you have any uh, questions about your home search? No, there's no questions. They got all the answers online. Right. They can find the answer to everything. Right. Online. Okay, there's bye. No questions. <laughs> but what they, what they can't go see a home. That's you know that's what they need you for. Right. So that's a good way to kind of open up the conversation. Exactly. And Julia has a wonderful question that'll take us out. And I yep. can't believe I didn't think to mention this. Um, you're asking about call quality on desktop versus mobile. Loosely speaking, they are comparable. Uh, obviously, depends on your internet connection, your RAM on your computer. I mean, there's literally a, a thousand factors. But Follow Boss has this fantastic feature called Call Bridge, and what it can do, even on desktop, if you hit that, when you click on the number, it'll ask you, "Do you want to call from Follow Boss, meaning internet, um, on a desktop, or use Call Bridge?" And if you use CallBridge, what it does, it actually uses your cell phone signal. It still calls from your follow-up boss number, but it uses your follow-up boss um, number with your cell phone signal. So if you're having issues, there is a way to kind of mimic mobile on desktop. But hey, here's the good news. Number one, you're going to be on that call. Number two, if your settings are set up and it's appropriate in your state, recording that call, pretty easy to check, to tell and remedy. So if you're like, oh, that call didn't sound good, now you can can troubleshoot it. So, um, and then yeah, another good question from Sarah. I recommend people using desktop have only one browser logged into. I don't know. I, I would I wouldn't say I recommend that. No. I, yeah, I, I would. I sure it's better without. Yeah. Uh, maybe, but again, maybe it comes down to bandwidth, internet connection, yeah. all those things. But there's 
there's no value in that in the sense that like I often have multiple accounts open doing stuff and one rings and I mute it and stuff is happening. <laughs> um, Worse when you got a bunch open and then you ring it. Who's calling? Where is it? Which, which one's one? ringing? That <laughs> you're gonna call or a webinar with somebody else and everybody yeah. freaks out and yeah. tries to do it. So um, yeah, sir, I do think that's accurate. I think it, it might be what, better to have one at a time. Um, but yeah, I think I think that probably makes the most sense. So cool. Well, always appreciate you guys joining. We do these twice a month. Um, actually, I'm gonna do one last thing. I'm gonna drop in the um link to all our prior office hours so if you have one you want to check out linda and i have done a bunch together um one last drop for you guys all the office hours ever we typically do these with the, with a follow boss success manager who knows the system on various topics and obviously invite you guys to uh pop in and ask questions so hope to see you on the next one thanks linda thanks Lee. Our thanks manager. everyone see y'all soon Bye -bye.